Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 59. If you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Business 210, Chapter 5. If you're in the class, just go to our Chapter 5 website. Hey, we got to talk about the mean and standard deviation for a discrete probability distribution. Now, I'm going to do it the long way and then uh, the short way, and then in the next two videos we'll see two great useful examples for when you can use this. Now, let's go over and look at our formula for mean. It's called an expected value, E of x. The mean, and they use Greek letters here, you sum up all of the x times the probability. So you take each particular random discrete variable x times its associated probability, calculate all those, and then add them up. That is the expected value, the long run average, weighted average. Uh, that's a weighted average. And it does not have to be a value that the random variable can assume. For example, if you're selling cars, you have um, 0 to 5, but your average could be 2.1 cars per day. Uh, and then here's the standard deviation, again, a Greek uh, sigma equals the square root of x minus mu, this right here. So the one we calculate here, we'll use down here. Each particular random variable x minus the expected value squared times the probability. So you have, this is the uh, deviation squared, right? So you calculate each deviation squared, multiply it times the probability, you get all of those, and then add them up. This is the amount of spread in the data, the variability, does the mean fairly represent the data? Let's go back over here. Let's uh, see how to do this. So there it is expected value x, sum of x times the probability. So let's go ahead and calculate a column of values. I'm going to um, highlight the whole column. Equals the x times the probability. Oh, wait, wait a second. I need to explain what this is. This is the same data we're using from before, right? x equals number of operating rooms used in one day. There's our frequency. That was when we originally had the whole data set, right? Or we got this from a problem. Eight times we had the random variable three. So that's how from the eight we got the probability. So this expected value is the mean, right? So what we're really trying to say is on a typical day, what is the average number of operating rooms that'll be in use. Okay, there it is. Each x times each associated probability. I'm going to control enter to populate all those cells. Now when we add them up, alt equals, that'll give us our expected value. Whoa, 2.65 operating rooms used per day. Again, that is, uh, it can assume values that uh, are not one of the random variables. But for planning, this is very useful. So about 2.5 rooms are going to be used per day on average. OK, so that's how to do it there. Now, I want you to notice something. Let's put this into edit mode. Blue 1 times green 1, enter, F2, blue 1 times green 1, enter. Are each one of the blue ones and green ones in the same column? Enter. And are there four values for x and four probabilities? Is that true? Yes. Anytime you get this situation where you have a column or row of values multiplied by another column of row or values, there is a brilliant function in Excel. It is called sum product. Let's try it. Equals sum product. What is sum product? Well, you can tell what it means, sum all of the products. This function is made exactly for this situation. And there are tons of examples in the business world and statistics and finance and accounting where you're multiplying one column or row times another column or row. Notice it says array, array. So we simply highlight our x's, 
comma. Remember, the screen tips are polite. If you put a comma, it bolds the next one, and then you get the next series of values. So this is the first time we've seen the sum product. We'll get to use it a lot because it is amazing. In statistics and finance and other fields, there are just so many times we have one column of values and you got to multiply it times another column. Remember, it doesn't. our values are set up in columns, but it could be row, row, right? All right, hit Enter. Is that much easier than wasting all of this space right here? And uh, for example, in finance, you just do this calculation all the time. So not wasting all of your spreadsheet with an extra column like this, being able to have this function to do this is just a huge time saver. All right. So that is the expected value. Now let's go on and do standard deviation. Now let's go back. Oh, here's our formula that we have to calculate the uh, the variance. I mean, sorry, I'm sorry, the deviation squared for each one of the x's times each one of the associated probabilities. So let's let's try it. I'm going to highlight all these cells. And now first, I'm just going to do x minus mu equals the x minus our mu that we've calculated, right? Now, I need to ho I need to F4 to lock that. And then I'll populate all the cells with Control-Enter. All right, now we have to square them. So I'm going to highlight that whole column equals this, and then Shift-6 for caret, which is exponent 2, Control-Enter. Finally, I have to multiply that deviation squared times its probability. So I say equals deviation squared times the probability. Now, look at this. See, the green one is there. The blue one is there. We're going to control enter and populate. But really, f for this whole column, we're going to add it all up to get variance. Are we not multiplying one column times another? Yes, we are. We'll keep that in our uh, memory for just a moment. Let's finish this calculation. Control enter. Now. Uh, this right here will give us a variance. We need, then need to take this square root. But so really, this is not the right label for this. Uh, but I'll fix that in just a moment. Uh, variance, Alt equals, Enter. Let's go back to our PDFs. That everything we did just right here for variance is inside there. The square root then gives us the standard deviation. The variance is just sigma squared. Right now, we can calculate our standard deviation equals square root. Remember, there's a couple ways to do square root, but square root function is real nice uh, and simple. So there it is, our standard deviation. Now, I'm going to come over here and fix this. I'm going to put, uh, how about square root around this? Zip. Watch this. Here's a great trick. Notice how some of it went off the screen. So I highlighted it, highlighted it, and under view, you can say, if I can find it under zoom, zoom to selection. The keyboard shortcut is Alt W G. You see, I use it all the time because if you want to just fit everything that's highlighted to the screen, that's a great little trick there. All right, so we did variance and standard deviation. Now. Um, this right here is really this squared. So this right here is if there was some way we could get the whole column of values here, subtract and then subtract one value, we could use the sum product. Because each one of these cells, there's a whole column minus one value, right? Well, there is a way to do that with the sum product. If we could do that, then we could just say, uh, calculate this whole column here, because remember, this was this one times this, the green one times the blue one, enter, F2, green one times the blue one, enter, this one times the blue one. So it's really the whole column here times whole column here, perfect use for the sum product. Now, there's I'm going to show you two different ways to, to do this. There's uh, one way that's a little bit less efficient. The textbook teaches you this way. They say go ahead and calculate this whole thing, which is fine if you do it that way. Then sum product is really easy, equals sum product. This times this. And it doesn't matter. Multiplication can be done in any order. I'm going to take the probabilities. 
comma, and then it's saying, give me the second array, so right there. Okay, what does that do? That's the sum product. This will give us the variance, right? So 92. Here. Notice we have that. Really, we want the square root of it. Is it OK if we could just came right here and typed square root and um, typed a little open parentheses and then came to the end here and put a close parenthesis? Is that OK to put two functions together? I think that's the first time we've done this in this class. Absolutely, you can do that totally, again, efficient because it's all in one cell. And sure enough, we get our answer. Now, let me show you if you want to do it all in one formula. And, you know, if some of you go on to finance, you'll probably be doing, you'll, you'll love the fact that you're able to do it in one cell because for in finance, you're just doing this type of mean and standard deviation for all of your stock values all the time. Let's do it all in one formula. I'm going to do sum product. Oops, equals sum product. Again, you can choose amongst your methods the, the, the longer or the shorter way. Sum product. Now, the first array I have to put in parentheses, and I have to say uh, our x's, because remember right here, x, time, uh, x minus mu, right? And watch this. I'm just going to say minus this. Now, the reason that this function here, some product, knows how to do this is because this is a whole bunch of values minus 1. And the sum product is handled to handle. This is called an array. It's, it knows how to handle arrays. There's hardly any functions in Excel that can do these cool tricks with arrays of value. But that will work. That will actually calculate every single one of these perfectly. I'm going to close parentheses. The reason why we had to put that in close parentheses is because, remember, we had to do minus and then do a square root. So I just forced the issue by saying, hey, do that minus first. And then I'm going to caret 2. Is that totally cool? Let me show you a trick here. Remember, we got all of these values right here when we did that calculation. If you highlight this whole range right here and hit the F9 key, it will evaluate it right in the middle of formula. Now, I'm going to control Z in a second because I wouldn't dare want to leave it that way. But notice, 2.722, Ah, oh, that is so cool. The sum product function knew exactly how to calculate that. Control Z. All right, that's the first array because remember, in this column, we took that array times that array. And that's what our formula says. It goes calculate all of the uh, deviation squared and multiply it times the probability. So I hit a comma, and I just hi highlight my probabilities, close parentheses. Now, that sum product will calculate the variance, so I hit Enter. That's the 9.2. I could easily, in a separate cell, just say equals square root of that, right? I could also uh, just as easily say equals that and then caret in parentheses 1 divided by 2. But I'm going to do it all in one formula. I'm just going to come here. I know that once I do the hard part, I can put it back into edit mode, F2. Click right at the beginning and add a function in front of all of it. In essence, I'm saying take the square root of whatever that big thing is right there and then enter. So there you have it. Easily with the sum product, first time we've used this function, we can calculate expected value. Easily we can calculate the standard deviation, all for discrete random variable or discrete uh, or random probability distribution. Now, I want to uh, point out two more things. Uh, the first thing is, you remember before when we had all of the raw data points? This was called a deviation, and when we added them all up, we got 0. That's not going to work here. I'm going to prove it to you. Alt equals. It's not going to equal 0 because we, we do not have all the data points. Remember, how many 2s were there? 5. How many 3s were there? 8. If we had all of the data points, then of course when we added up all of the deviations, we'd get 0. In fact, I'm going to come over here and um, show you that that's true. How did I extrapolate all the data points from a, a frequency table like this? Well, 2 
uh, operating rooms used, we had five of them, so I just listed five of them. By the way, that's why we can do our weighted uh, uh, average here to calculate our expected mean. All right, so equals average. I'm going to click on the top cell, control shift down arrow to highlight the whole cell, and I'm going to hit shift enter. That puts the formula in and jumps your cursor up. You got to be kidding me. It's 2.65. That's exactly what we got when we did our weighted average over here. Totally amazing. From a discrete probability distribution, x, and our probabilities, we were able to get our actual mean. Um, and notice they used a gr the Greek letters, mu and sigma. One of the reasons is because you can go back to the original uh, set of values from our calculation. Now I would like to calculate uh, and show you the deviations equals that particular x minus and then there's our mean. I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it, control enter, and then I'm going to click and drag it down. I clicked and dragged there because I didn't want to, oh well there was nothing there, that would have worked. There it is, there's all of our deviations. If we add them up, since this is the original data set, Alt equals, and then Enter, we better get zero, and sure enough, we do. Now let's go ahead and finish our calculations here. Equals the deviation, caret two, and then I'm gonna click and drag it down. And I'm gonna add them up, I need to to calculate our standard deviation, and we're going to do standard deviation of the population because this is original data set, is we have to actually count. I mean, why don't I come down here and do count? And then equals count, because remember we need our n, and I'm going to highlight all those values. Ooh, one too many. Ooh, one too many. Okay, I highlighted. I got the dance and dance going around the right ones. All right, there's our big N. Now we can do our equals sum of all of our deviations squared. Ooh, yuck. I'm going to highlight all those. Zoop. Close parentheses divided by, and then we'll do our 20 right there. Now, wait a th that right there will give us the variance, not the standard deviation. But let's, let's just uh, hit Enter. Oh. Is that what we got when we got the variance over here? It is what we got. That's, by the way, the decimals, does it look like a different number? 92.75, oh, well, uh, yeah, we got the same number. But we could uh, show more decimals, right? Oh, no, that, that is the number. Ah, but that's variance. So what do we do? We hit F2 to put it in edit mode. Can we do our trick we just did a second ago with the square root? You bet. Square root. Remember? That's just whatever the thing is, and no matter how big this formula is, you can put whatever other formula have inside uh, another function. So, but very carefully come to the end, or even it might be safer to click up here and then close parentheses. No way. There it is. Nine point nine six three zero six eight. Is that what we got over here? That is just simply amazing. Now, uh, one last thing. If we used STDEV, uh, that would have minus 1 in the denominator, so it would give us a different number than STDEVP. So let's just see that. This is for a sample, which they're assuming this is not. And then equals STDEVP for the population. This function with the original data set will, of course, give us the same answer that we got using our standard deviation for discrete probability distribution uh, formula. So there you go. That's a lot about um, mean and standard deviation for a discrete probability distribution. But boy, uh, there are a lot of great uses for this in various fields. And boy, that sum product function, boy, great function. Also, we saw how you can um, put whatever size formula you, you have built inside of another function. When we come back, we have uh, two other videos on specific uses for mean and standard deviation of a discrete probability distribution. See you next video.